quantum computing is one of those exciting stories that investors seem to be attracted to. And just until recently, there weren't really any ways to play that thesis. Today, we have two publicly traded quantum computing stocks, IonQ and Rigetti Computing. Today, we're going to talk about why we're avoiding Rigetti. We talked before about why we were avoiding IonQ, and at least one reason is common between the two, and that's that neither of these companies have been able to achieve meaningful revenues, which we define as $10 million per annum. So one problem that you have when you invest in quantum computing companies is that there's no way to tell which company is ahead. So you can look at their marketing collateral, and of course, they put up charts like this one where IonQ shows how far they are ahead of the pack. And then you can go and take a look at some charts from Rigetti, and they show here how far they are ahead of the pack. So it becomes difficult to figure out which firm is in the lead. Now, what everybody's been waiting for in quantum computing is an event called quantum supremacy. And that's where a quantum computer demonstrates for the first time that it can do something a classical computer can't. And we saw Google claim quantum supremacy that was maybe three years ago. They claimed that they had achieved quantum supremacy and everybody doubted that they actually had and it's all quite debatable. Now, when it comes to pure play stocks like IonQ and Rigetti, it's pretty straightforward. You look at revenue. So if they've built something that people are willing to pay for, a platform or a service, and both these companies are pursuing what they call quantum computing as a service, then we should see other firms willing to pay for it. And this chart I've taken from an article that we wrote on, I believe it was IonQ, I'll include links to past articles, and this just shows a comparison of these two firms in terms of what they hoped to bring in for revenues in last year and this year. Now, for Rigetti, they're actually doing quite well. So they had forecasted $5 million for 2021, and they came in over that by around 10%. So that's great to see. Most SPACs don't hit the targets that they promise investors on their glossy SPAC decks, but Rigetti was an exception. So we're really excited to see that. Now, when we look at their latest quarter and we were waiting for the SPAC merger to complete and for a quarter uh, 10Q to be filed with the SEC so that we could mine it for some information and both of those things happened. So Rigetti completed their merger and they also filed a 10Q for Q1 2022. And there were some interesting tidbits in there. So they showed customer concentration risk for three customers for uh, Q1 2021. And then, of course, this latest quarter. And you can see here that 83% of revenues come from just three customers. That's a great deal of concentration risk, which we wouldn't want to take on. And they also noted that 76% of revenues this past quarter came from government. Again, these are development contracts that they're doing, and they said that they expect these sort of contracts to remain going forward. And what ends up happening is that you see here their revenues for this quarter were less than the last year's same quarter. That's because of timing on these development projects. So you can expect to see this lumpiness around the revenues. Now, they're expecting to bring in $8 million in 2022. This quarter is not off to a good start, but... We're going to tw trust what management says because they were able to hit last year's target. So right away, just looking at this 10Q, this very heavy concentration risk, which is only increasing from year to year, it appears. And this heavy reliance in the government means that this isn't a firm that we would consider investing in, not to mention that they haven't achieved $10 million in revenues per year, which is what we expect a firm to do in terms of classifying it as having meaningful revenues. Now, two things that we've recently introduced when we're looking at companies, gross margin and runway. Now, in respect to gross margin, we'd like to look at that once Rigetti actually has meaningful revenues because it's irrelevant if they can't manage to have meaningful revenues. So runway, we can certainly look at that after paying 14.44% in fees to the SPAC company they merged with, the end result was 225 million. And now they're showing about 206 million on their 
balance sheet, they have $32 million in debt. But if we just take that cash position and we look at their last several quarters and say, all right, roughly they're burning $10 million per quarter, that means they have about five years runway left, which is good because they're going to need it. The timelines they have have been slipping. So this was taken out of that 10Q and they said that in the past they failed to meet publicly announced milestones and may fail to meet those going forward. The fact that they admit that is admirable, but that's not what you want to hear a company saying. This is almost a caveat that says, yeah, we fucked up on our execution before and it's likely it could happen again. Well, what sort of a response is that? So that's not very promising. And they talk about here in 2018, we announced a plan to build and deploy a 128 qubit system over the subsequent 12 months, but have not to date built a 128 qubit system. So this whole uncertainty and inability to commit this vagueness does not inspire confidence if you're somebody who's invested in this firm now when it comes to investing in quantum computing there's a number of things that as investors we should focus on and that's that there have been a number of claims about quantum supremacy made and if the experts can't decide whether or not that's happened then how are retail investors going to decide and you also need to consider that they may not even acknowledge quantum supremacy has happened if a firm wants to keep that secret. And we met with one qubit in Vancouver. This was something they raised, which was very interesting that a company may be incented not to let the rest of the world know that they've achieved quantum supremacy so they can keep it for themselves and have a competitive advantage. So that's one thing to, to consider. When it comes to pure play stocks, the only ground truth would be revenue growth. And then you can consider the major tech players. So a reader had responded recently and said, well, I'll just buy Google and Amazon and IBM and the major companies working on quantum computing. Well, that's that poses a bit of a problem because these are such large firms that you're not going to have any insight really into how quantum computing is impacting their revenues, whether or not it is. And you would only, if you're looking for that exposure, you would only want to invest in a firm where you were able to get that exposure over time. So Google claimed they had achieved quantum supremacy, but that was challenged by quite a few. And of course, IBM has their own definitions and we've written extensively about quantum computing over the years. And it's sort of like fusion. It always is uh, five years away. It's always around the corner. So that needs to be considered and then you also need to consider there are quite a few quantum computing startups, at least several dozen that we've written about over the years. And those are all off limits to retail investors. One of those being Quantinium, which is a notable firm that's been launched by Honeywell. And they're cited in Rigetti's 10Q alongside the big tech names, Google, Amazon, and IBM as being competitors of Rigetti. So, you need to consider that as well. Investing in quantum computing is not straightforward, and it has been difficult for investors to try to figure out who the leaders might be. There's nothing saying there is going to be a single leader. There may be uh, multiple firms that develop uh, quantum computing solutions that other companies are willing to pay for. These are just some of the names of firms that are dabbling in this space. Now, just to conclude, there are two publicly traded quantum computing stocks on offer, IonQ and Rigetti, neither of which have meaningful revenues. You'll notice that IonQ had their recent Q1 2022, and they talked about how much revenue growth they had. And if you look at that, a large percentage of it is related to related party revenues. We pointed out in our last video and article on IonQ that they were likely going to start introducing related party revenues. That's a problem. You can't give another firm money and then have them give it back to you and count that as revenue. So um, take that for what it is. Um, these are the only two stocks, IonQ and Rigetti. There's also D-Wave that announced a SPAC and that's still in progress. That deal hasn't closed yet until it does. There's no point in really looking at what they're doing. We wrote a piece on D-Wave and just based on what they presented in their SPAC deck, it was a real disappointment for what this firm should have accomplished. So. We'll check back in about a year 
uh, maybe once a year check with the quantum computing theme, unless there are new entrants, uh, or unless one of these firms manages to achieve meaningful revenues as defined by $10 million or more a year. So please just put your comments in the comment section. I'll link to the research pieces in the description of this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today.